Hey everybody, Reef Girl here, and welcome to my channel. Although I collected all the footage as events were unfolding, I almost didn't make this video because what happened was acutely embarrassing. But I thought if it could happen to me, it could easily happen to someone else. It'll be months before we know if there's a happy ending. And before I forget, if you haven't already, I would love it if you'd subscribe. And while you're there, hit that notification bell so you can be kept right up to date with everything that's going on on my channel. I have a giveaway coming up in a future video. The top of frag tank has been disassembled. All the frags moved into cups. You can see here, I've tucked heat packs here and here here and then similarly on this side and I'm going to put this piece of paper on top and tuck another couple of heat packs in here and then close up the box. So are you shocked when you see how many of these things I put in that little box? Yeah that's what I mean when I say I am an idiot. Keep watching I'll show you how things went. So here's hoping the temperature stays reasonable and we're on our way. After a couple of hours, I realized I should probably check the box. And yeah, the carnage here is because the box was hot on the outside. I put my hand in and was horrified to feel just how hot it was. So I wrenched my shoulder getting the box open and pulling all of the heat packs out and just tossing them on the floor. We had to stop and check this out and see what exactly was going on. So we have cloudy water. Yeah, I'm not optimistic. This is the uh, octospawn, a bunch of zoanthids in the Cyphastria. Cyphastria looks bleached. And then over here, we have unfortunately a bleached bird's nest, another bleached coral. So I won't know what's going on until I get them actually home. So I'm just going to open this one up. All right, so yeah, you can see the devastation in here. Um, it's the octospawn. I don't know what to expect. I Maybe I got them before they all actually are dead. Maybe because I put a bunch of carbon granules in each one that might have helped a little bit. All I can do at this point is repack them in the box because they still are a little warm. I'm going to take the temperature. The other consideration of course is what happens to zoanthids when you boil them? Well, they release toxins. This water was not boiling but it was extremely warm. It was hotter than my skin. I, when I touched the outside of the cups it actually felt hot. So I don't know. rising. Talk about the stupidest, worst mistake you can make. And this was it. I can't quite believe I actually did not think about this. All right, what do we got for temperature now? I felt sick when I saw that it was still 92 degrees several hours after the heat packs were removed. The package of the hand warmers, I found out later, says they can reach as much as 150 degrees. So I'm going to pack everything back up. I spent the rest of the drive home trying to figure out how I was going to try and rescue these things. First up, I decided to do a dip in Seachem's Reef Dip, which essentially is iodine. So I took all of the frags out of the water and the very first thing I did with each one was rinse it in some clean, fresh salt water. It went from there into the Seachem solution. I did this for all of the frags. I swirled the water around for about five minutes. Then the next step was a bath in a solution of Restore. This is a Brightwell product that is designed to help repair damaged coral tissue. So I rinsed each frag again in fresh salt water after the iodine and placed it in the Restore bath. After they were all in that bath, I swirled the water around for a good 10 minutes to try and get it in every little crevice. At this point, doing a quick visual check, some things looked pretty terrible. Others, not too bad. Okay, so here we are. I put 
them in kind of a relatively low flow area, but you can see there is still some flow because there's tissue flapping in the breeze. Everything else is here on this other frag rack. I'm not optimistic about the octospawn. It looks to me like I'm gonna lose it very quickly to brown jelly, but I'm gonna dip it in iodine every day until I see what happens. And these are the rest of the zoanthus here. I also put the cycastria here. It still has color. They're in Mollywood right now. It's after lights out. And I guess I'll see how everything looks tomorrow. Next morning, here we are. There is still tissue. There are still coralites. So I'm not going to give up on this. Then the cycastria. Check it out. The octospawn. I believe it's toast. These other things, I'm hopeful that they're gonna open back up because they're not melting away. Yep, here's me and Dave, dipping zoanthas. I've seen a bunch of stuff coming off of here. Trying to save them. Hope it works. Clove polyps, not looking too good. I'm not optimistic anymore. They just, they're just melting away. And the octal spawn, you can see the molly is in and up. Cephastria. This is the bizarro. It still has color on it. The bird's nests. But they still look like they have polyps. So this is day 15. Um, You'd think they would be totally green and completely engulfed in algae by now if they were dead. Looking at the Cyphostria. Definite areas of fluorescence, definite tissue, definite color. And this one might come back. I'm getting very hopeful. The rest of these are pretty much barren. Two weeks ago, I had what I thought was going to be 100% death. Now I'm not so sure. This is November the 11th. And I'm not giving up. This is, uh, it's going to be five weeks tomorrow since these came home with me. And you can see there is algae forming. Here's why I'm not giving up. Those small raised white bumps you can see weren't there two days ago. I think it's quite possible these might come back. But who knows, it'll take months. So thanks for watching and I'll leave you with a little illustration of the magnitude of the mistake that I made. This is how many heating packs I used in my little tiny box of small cups of water. And now I'll show you how many I would have needed if I read the instructions to actually do the job for the eight or nine hours that we were going to be on the road. That many. Maybe another one, but for sure this would have worked.